Now time for the next uh, speaker. Yeah. So next speaker, Christopher, please. So Christopher Yan Chak Chan, and this is a work actually uh, done, uh, I think, between different uh, institutions. So you come from the University of Würzburg. Uh, the uh, humanitarian OpenStreetMap team is involved, as well as the German Remote Sensing Data Center and the German Aerospace Center. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, good morning. Um, so thank you for my lightning talk. So it will be about investing the capability of UAV imagery in AI as the mapping of refugee camps in East Africa. Um, this work has been supported and data provided by HOT and collaborated with German Aerospace. Um, so, uh, building on from uh, Benny's talk, uh, we have a big problem with, within the OSM system where uh, developing and developed area has a big disparity in, in digitization. And uh, although we have episodes of uh, increase, net increase in digitization, it is still a highly neglected problem. And this is where AI system mapping could come in and uh, lift the load off the human mappers, um, where if, if a human can just validate, it's a lot easier job to do. So this project has four objectives. So first is to use the Open Arrow Map, which has been a partner uh, organization of uh, OSM for building extraction of informal settlements. Uh, it should compare existing models to the models that are trained in the study. Um, thirdly, it should be ensure reproducibility through open source code. And lastly, design an experimental framework that is easily extendable by the hot community. So let's take a look at a few images. This is uh, the Kelobai camp in Kakuma, Turkana County, Kenya. It is in Northwest uh, rural Kenya. And in the green circle, we have the residential area. It's a relatively new camp. And so it's well spatially designed, uh, spaced out. And in the blue circle, we have the um, economical center, so the local market. Now, the other area of interest is Detaleka in Dawa, Malawi, which is near the capital of Longwe. And um, in the green circle, we have the UNHCR tent, so clearly residential. And across the road, you see the blue circle and, and the market area, while the rest of the buildings it is not so clearly defined. So initially, we thought about doing a segmentation of like residential, non-residential, but perhaps we can only do with building segmentation given the limitation here. So in addition to the problem of highly complex urban morphology, we also have uh, something unique to drone, drone imagery problem, which are motion artifacts caused by UAV motion. It creates tearing of the edges around the buildings, which we suspect uh, it's a significant feature for the model to learn. So transferring of a satellite trained model might not be appropriate. So it and so we what we did was we took a competition winning drone imagery network and we want to compare our results against that from the Open City AI Challenge, which trained on uh, uh, ten cities in Africa, um, and sixteen sets of experiments were done on eight different architectures. Uh, which switches out the unit. There are all unit-based architecture, which switches out the encoder, the initialized weights, and it switches out the um, input data set combination of the different camps. Um, and the, for example, this is the result. On the top here, you see the competition winning network, where uh, although it scored quite well, it is very, very confident on the metal sheeted roof. You can see that, but it completely neglects anything that it's like a thatch roof that um, a lot of the older refugee camps have because they look quite texturally and color similar to the background dirt road. Meanwhile, in the bottom one, this is a result trained from um, scratch from the data set only provided and augmented to us. And we can, it is doing a little bit better and we can also pick up the building features here where in the center triangle where Perhaps the human labeler um, is confused or did not, did not include. And there are many instances of this, which could potentially provide the um, uh, provide additional data. Yeah. Yeah, so this is the full set of results. Um, I know it's a lot. I'm sorry. Uh, so please come and talk to me about it. And we can see that the. Um, on the overall, um, 
they perform quite similarly, other than perhaps the anomaly of changes in the uh, transforming training from the competition winning network. So the main three takeaways is that open UAV data can really foster development of humanitarian AI system mapping. Um, previous competition winning network, I, although they score quite well on intersection over union, might not might have a lot of difficulties in new environments, and that perhaps this means that investment in dedicated model could provide a lot much better results. So yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I don't have time for questions. Thanks a lot, Christopher. Please come to Christopher in case you have questions.